our next guest was pulled on stage and then played guitar with the Beach Boys. Fun fact, I didn't know that. It apparently led to some of the rest of her life. Please welcome Anya Taylor-Joy! <laughs> Okay, let me feed into the curiosity of the question. You were playing guitar, pretend with Beach Boys. What yeah. happened in that moment? Because there are moments that change our lives. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, when I was a kid, like the only music that I loved was music from the 50s and the 60s. And so the Beach Boys were specifically very important to me. And so they were playing and I just ran to the very front and I was singing along to every single song. And so Mike Love stopped the concert and said, okay, I understand why everybody else knows all the lyrics, but there's a child that knows all the lyrics. <laughs> Mike Love pulls me up on stage. I can't play guitar at all. He hands me a guitar. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing with this. Uh, help. He's like, no, 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 just go for it. And I was like, okay. Greatest guitar solo of all time that, you know, occurred. Like, it was amazing. <laughs> Didn't play a single note. Um, and I, I, I took it into the modeling agency and I just asked them, I was like, do you think I can play guitar? And they're like, yeah, you're shredding it. I was like, acting. Yes. I want to be an actor. Like, help me. Let's, let's do this. So, yeah, big up, Mike Love. Thank you for that. And what age are you around? Um, I'm like 14, okay. but a young 14. Okay. Like, I looked... My, I hadn't grown into my face yet. <laughs> and I love that I heard you weren't always embraced at school. Mm -hmm. I was very, very lucky with my parents because when I was bullied for my looks, my mom always said, you look at the inside of somebody. You look at the inside of somebody, you don't look at class, you don't look at anything like that, you don't look at what they do for a job. It's just, do you like that person's heart? And I really have to give a big shout out to my mom for that because it was really helpful. And it's true, apparently, that you weren't the world's greatest chess player, but you changed the world with chess. I, I could not play chess at all. I had never picked up a piece in my life. Um, but I, I read that book and I just, I felt that character so deeply. I felt like I could do it immediately that moment and physically ran to meet the director. And before I could say anything, I just screamed at him. It's not about chess and she has to have red hair. And he hired me, which is surprising because I looked crazy. Now, when you were choosing to do this project, The Menu, it is so unlike any film I've seen mm -hmm. in a very long time. It is so set apart. It's it crazy. Is, it's a master class in tone. Ugh, thank we have you. a clip, take a look. I'm so blown away. So, Margo, you will fetch the barrel instead. Me? Yes, you remember the smokehouse. Uh, maybe vaguely, I don't... Chef, perhaps one of us. Chef. Margot is now one of us, Elsa. Right, Margot? Yes. Yes what? Yes, Chef. I've not seen a movie like this. Did you know going into it, it would be so unique? With the menu, you really... I, I had no idea where it was going. And if you've seen that final scene, who on earth could possibly see that coming? And I was so excited by the prospect of being on something that original, but also collaborating with these incredible performers. I've never seen anything like that. Um, now, as a girl, I'm totally in love with you. I heard you like raves. You like sex in the city. You're cool. You're fun. Age transcends. I just want to hang out with you and Please. Bring back dance parties. Yes. And is it true you went up to Sarah Jessica Parker and you were like, I am watching you Girl. in big. It was, yeah, it was a really bad moment uh, for me just because I saw her and I ran up and I was going through a really bad breakup. And I was like, hey, I just have to tell you, like, I've been watching you in big and it's like giving me a lot of hope. And she was like, oh, that you'll get back together. And I was like, no, that I will survive, <laughs> that I can like move on from this and that it'll be okay. And she was like, Okay, that's, I'm gonna get in my car now. Um, but on the subject of raving, <sighs> um, 
I was lucky enough to live in Berlin for six months shooting The Queen's Gambit, and their the version... The epicenter of the rave. Yes. The start of the rave. Yes. <laughs> In Berlin, it's also, it doesn't have to be like unhealthy. So my version of it, and which I genuinely think was the healthiest I have ever been, was I would wake up on a Sunday, I'd have brunch, I would go to the club, um, I would dance for about eight hours, not talk to anybody, go home, eat a bowl of spaghetti and wake up at four o'clock in the morning and go to work. I don't know, maybe we start a movement. We know enough cool people exactly. that I think we can make a club where and we've dancing all been so is scared exactly. and respectful, but it is time to start, you know, raves again at sensible hours, because it's true. I'm kind of done early. Raves be... are for people with children too. Yes, exactly. It's inclusive. It's you inclusive. don't have to be young and wild. Yeah. You can, you know, express yourself.